Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. I'm Anton, and today I'll be printing with a Ruby nozzle. Eh, you know, the usual stuff. So, let's get to it. So if you're new in the 3D printing world, you might not know that some filaments are very abrasive. Some are so hard and so rough that they act as sanding paper on the nozzle. A brass nozzle is good enough when printing the usual filaments such as PLA, ABS, or PETG, because brass is much stronger than those filaments. However, if you want to print more exotic or specialty filaments such as carbon fiber, copper, tungsten, or even glass fiber filaments, you'll have to step up your game. The normal solution is to get a hardened steel nozzle. They're very good and will work great, up to a certain point. But if you want the best of the best, that's far away from the best. If a Chinese clone brass nozzle is like a bike, a genuine brass nozzle is like a Prius, a stainless steel nozzle is like a Mustang, and this is the Ferrari of nozzles. This is the Olsen Ruby. No, that's not a typo. This nozzle has a real ruby on its tip. It is manufactured in Sweden by a company named 3D Verkstan. But why the hell would you put a ruby on a 3D printer's nozzle? Well, it turns out the answer is very simple. To enable a wider variety of printing materials, to minimize downtime due to maintenance, and to achieve more precise prints. And you know, to add some bling. Okay, let me break that up a little. More materials? Well, it turns out that there are some materials that even the hardened steel nozzles won't handle. This nozzle was actually designed to print boron carbide, the third hardest material on earth. So throw anything at it except diamonds. But why would you even do that? That would be freakishly expensive. This nozzle will also minimize downtime and increase precision. See, the fact is that even a hardened steel nozzle will suffer some deterioration after printing only 4 kilograms of carbon fiber filament. Usually, the tip starts getting wider and wider, decreasing precision. After a time, you'll need to replace the nozzle, which means downtime. This won't happen when you have a ruby chewing anything you throw at it. Now, this is the tip of the Olsen ruby after printing 18 kilograms of carbon fiber. All the edges are still in perfect condition. The dark stuff you see is just filament residue. That means less time making repairs and more time printing. And you know we love that. And there's more to it than just wear resistance. It turns out that rubies have a smaller expansion coefficient than hardened steel or brass, meaning that even when heating up to very high temperatures, the nozzle's width will remain essentially the same. And to keep great thermal conductivity, most of the nozzle is made out of brass, yet the heavy lifting of resisting wear and tear is up to the ruby. Changing your current nozzle to this one is just like changing it to any other type. Just make some space, turn up the temperature, unscrew the Prius, and screw in the Ferrari. Now, there's one thing you need to be very careful about when installing this nozzle. Make sure you adjust your Z and stop, or you might crash it into the bed. And you might not want to hit that ruby. That would be like crashing your Ferrari on your way out of the dealer. And that's not a good experience. So, it's been a month since I installed the nozzle, and I've had zero problems. No clogs so far, and the lines are as perfect as the first day I used it. The Olsen Ruby will work with a huge range of materials. Basically anything you can think of, PLA, ABS, PET, nylon, carbon fiber, steel, wood, copper, boron carbide, tungsten, glass fiber, they will all go through as easy as a knife through butter. So should you buy this nozzle? Well, it's quite expensive, it's a tad over 100 bucks. Yet I think the answer is very simple. If you rarely print with abrasive materials, then you're better off with a hardened steel nozzle. Those will work just fine. I will link some good ones down in the description. Now, if you frequently use abrasive materials, or if you have a maker space, I think the Olsen Ruby is a no-brainer. I mean, you would get a nozzle that will not wear down no matter how much you use it, and you will minimize downtime due to maintenance. And in some of these cases, time is money. So I think it's a very good choice. It's also important to mention that the thread on this nozzle is the same as the E3D V6 nozzles, and there's also a version just like the Volcano nozzle. So if you want to try one out for yourself, I'll leave a link to 3D Verkstan's website down in the description. 
Also, remember to tag Think Making in Instagram or Twitter to get a chance to get your creations featured. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you loved it, feel free to support me through Patreon or by buying some cool t-shirts in my merch store. Links down in the description. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and to turn on those notifications. If you're wondering what to watch next, check out this video. As always guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.